1 Samuel chapter 13. Saul reigned one year. And when he had reigned two years over Israel, only two years, two years, Saul chosen 3,000 men of Israel, where of 2,000 were with Saul and Michmash and Mount Bethel, and 1,000 with Jonathan and Gibda, that's his hometown, of Benjamin. And the rest of the people, he sent every man to his tent. So he gets two bands of men, sends a third home. And Jonathan smote the garrison, that's the troops, uh, a ward of troops or armament supplies of the Philistines. And that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, Israel, saying, let the Hebrews hear. Victory. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten the garrison of the Philistines. He gets the credit, so Jonathan did it. Saul's in charge, he's the captain. That Israel also may have an abomination with the Philistines. And the people called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the, Fer and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. 30,000 chariots. That's a lot. And 6,000 horsemen. Now, this is an army. 36,000 minimum men. Who knows how many were in the chariots? Usually one, but they also had chariots with two. People as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. You couldn't count them. So there are men in chariots. There are men on horses. And besides that, there is a whole group of armed men with spears, arrows. And you can't count them. And they came up and pitched in Michmash. Now Michmash is nine miles northeast of Jerusalem. In Benjamin. This shows you where we are. Eastward in Beth Avon. Nine miles northeast of Jerusalem. And this is before the, the temples in Jerusalem. Jerusalem's in Benjamin. But it's a credit to Judah. And when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, there's too many. Were outnumbered. Then the people did hide themselves in the caves and in the thickets. That's the first time that word shows up. Thickets. That's a dense growth of wood, bush, and trees. It's plural. Where you find thicket in the Bible, the first place that shows up is Genesis 22, 13, when that ram is caught in the thicket by the horn. Here's thicket. They're hiding anywhere where they can go. Where that ram got caught with his horns, these men are running. They're probably getting thorns. They're probably getting scratched up. And this pictures the day of the Lord. When Jesus Christ comes back, the second advent speaks about the men hiding in the cave. They're throwing their idols away. They're saying, please do not let that one on the horse catch us. Though they're already guilty. As we said previous in, in another message, God already knows what you're doing. Throwing your stuff in the caves or hiding in the cave. And the Bible says, uh, the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. So we're seeing a type of second advent, a military gathering of all numbers of troops. In caves, in thickets, in rocks. In rocks. Be a pile of rock. And in high places. That's where they will turn to worship pretty soon. And in pits. That's the first time that shows up. Well, my life is the pits. That's what their life is. They're, they're running from a, from a military overgrown and all outnumbered. <laughs> and pits don't have good condensation in the Bible. These pits would probably be, some of them, would be used to trap lions and, and animals. 
potty. And you would think just the lion would say lion pit. There's no ladder. <laughs> Once you run into, oh, you got to wait till somebody comes run by. But pits, pits are spoken of hell. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Galilee. <laughs> We're out of here. <laughs> running away from God, running away from the land. They're not standing and fighting. Hasn't the entire history of Israel been God's taking care of you? As for Saul, as for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. They've already rejected God. They've already gone against God. America is a nation of anxiety and taking pills for your for your nerves and for your calmness and all that because they've rejected God. Now, I'm not saying that uh, if you truly have a misfunction of your brain and the chemicals in your body, all right, you got a problem. But the main problem of America today is the re disobedience and rejection of God and Jesus Christ and the Word of God. We are fighting over this country, not over which Bible should be the Bible, which God should be the God. We're fighting over the Republicans and Democrats. That's not the way it should be. And that's what they're doing here. We told God, we don't want you no more. We want a man. All right? You got your man. How are you doing in battle? <laughs> Scared. And he tarried seven days. According to the set time that that Samuel had appointed, but Samuel came not to Gilgal. All right, appointed. Chapter seven, verse sixteen. This, this chapter confuses me. He says he's reigned like one or two years, and now they go back in time. Well, it's not really back in time because I think I found the answer to that one here. It's seven sixteen. I know. I know. Some people say. Back when he reigned and, and stand out. We'll go look at that for a moment, but let's look at 716 before we look at that other one. And I think this is the answer. 716. And this is Samuel, verse 15. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpeth, and judged Israel in those places, and then Ramah, his city. So when we come back over here, in verse 8, he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. I'm thinking that the fact is that Samuel came to Gilgal on his circuit a certain time of the year. Now, there will people say, go to chapter 10, verse 8, and this gets confusing. In chapter 10, verse 8, The Bible says, And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come up unto thee and offer burnt offerings and sacrifices and peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And then two years later, <laughs> I mean, either or. That was 10 what? 10 8. I mean, 716 would be he had a certain time. 10 8. And when you say Sam reigned, Sam, Saul reigned one year, and when he had reigned two years, he made a two year appointment. So. And the problem is, okay, this battle that goes on, so that what they would be saying is, Chapter 13, verses 5 and on is before chapter 13, verses 1 and 4, which could happen, and it does happen. And I don't think that this circuit time of Sammy would be wrong, and I don't think that, okay, verses 5 and on happened earlier. It could be. Verse 9, Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. 
Now Saul is a king and a prophet. He was never called to be a priest. That is not his office. He has intruded into the priest's office where he does not belong. That's a violation. By the way, Saul, is, later on, we will read, Lord willing, he's going to have the priests killed because they helped David. Saul is always now working against whatever's right. And verse 10, and it came to pass that as soon as he made an end of offering, doesn't God always work like that? As soon as you do that wrong, boing! As a child, as soon as you've done that wrong, boing, there's your parent. He has finished offering, the smoke is coming off the altar. And it came to pass that as soon as he made an end, he's finished, of the offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. He's, he's getting away from that altar. He's walking on to Samuel. Hey, how you doing, Samuel? Don't, maybe trying to block Samuel from seeing the, the smoke in the, in the altar over there. So, he's shifty. That's what I'm trying to say. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? That's the same thing that God said to Adam. Samuel and God wants a what did I do and a repentance of what I've done. Now Samuel can see what's going on. He's got a pretty good idea. Now God knew because God knows everything. He knew exactly what Adam said and did. And Saul said, because I saw the people... All right, places to blame on the people were scattered from me. They weren't scattered from you. They were scattered because of the outnumbering of the military. And that thou, blame Samuel, came as not within the days appointed. I would say that there's a set time. Saul came the proper day. Saul did not wait for the hour. It was the right time. It's just a little off. So you got Adam in the garden. God, uh, God goes, what'd you do? And uh, I'm not quoting verbatim. It was that woman that, it was her fault. Okay, woman, what do you guys say? It's that serpent, Saul. It's the people. Really? It's you. Samuel. And the Philistines blame, 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 blame. It says in verse 8, he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed, but Samuel came not to Gogal, and the people were scattered from him, yes. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering to what avail when he's going against God. And that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Micmash. People are scattered. You're late, and it's the Philistines. Therefore said I, Saul speak, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, really? Did you hold a sword to your head and offer to burn offer? It's the people's fault. It's your fault, Samuel. It is the Philistines' fault. And I just had to force myself. What a leader. And isn't that the government of America today? It's the Republicans' fault by the Democrats. And it's the Democrats' fault, quoted by the Republicans. And no one will take responsibility for their own mess. 
the mess of our country is the Republicans and the Democrats, the government. The fault that's going on right now is Saul. Had he waited on God and prayed to God and sought God and said, God, we are in a realm right here that we're in trouble in Samuel. I don't know where Samuel is. If Samuel don't come on time, he's going to find our dead bodies. No, I forced myself. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God. What is the commandment? What does the law say? Only that of Aaron, of the tribe of Levi, are the ones to make the offerings. No one else. Did not the law say about a king that he was to write his own law? He was to write his own word of God? He had his own King Saul version of the Bible? Now we don't know. You know it's not ever recorded that any king did that. I believe maybe David done it. But the king in the Bible and the law had his office and the priests had their office. You have left the realm of church and state, Saul. The church, I'm talking religious, is not your department, king. And yet the priests are to intercept into your office and plead to God and search God for your reigning. But king, you stay out of our business. You stay out of the offerings. You stay out of the tabernacle. That is not your job. Now, the, the prophets, the men of God, the, the, the ones that God chose, they can walk up to the king and say, Thou art the man. You better not chop his head off for doing that. Thou hast doing for this, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded. Thee. Oh. Did you get that thee? God spoke to Saul. <laughs> and maybe the fact is, when Saul's making that offering, yeah, you better wait for Saul. You say, well, what is that? What would have spoken to Saul like that? It's called a conscience. You ever have your conscience saying, uh 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 uh? And now. Would the Lord had established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. At this point, you could have your sons. In the line of Saul would have been Jesus Christ. But you failed. You broke the commandment of God. At this point of Samuel 13, not any of your sons are going to be in the seed of Jesus Christ. They're going to be established off the throne. And it will be given to David. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Unto his death. Then David picks it up. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. David. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people. That's kind of interesting because David doesn't know nothing yet. This right here may be written after David's put in office. There are places in the Bible they are not in order. Because thou has not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. What's that? You interceded, you Interrupted the priest's office. Uzzah tries that and he gets leprosy. He say David did it. Oh boy, you want to talk about David and, and the special purpose that God gave him. David committed adultery and murder. And God says, I, I, I forgive you. Why? Why David? The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. It's David's heart condition that he had for God. 
David sinned for all his sin, but David kept his heart on God. David sit one day, he, he's in a castle, wherever he is, he, he's in a palace. He says, I am sitting among cedar boards in, in this lovely house that smells great. He looks out the window, he sees his curtains flapping in the breeze. He says, Lord, that ought not to be you. He says, Lord, I am living in a better building than you are living in. This is totally, absolutely wrong. And that's where you get the sure mercies of, of David by God saying, hey, have I ever asked for a place to be built? Have I ever complained that I dwelt in those curtains? Only got one problem here, David. You're a man that's killed people. I'm going to do your request, but I can't have you do it. I'm going to have a, a, your son. And your son, though he's going to wickedly sin against God, I am going to call him my son. I will chastise him. And Solomon will be type of Christian. A man after my own heart, the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel rose and got him up from Gilgal unto Gibna of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people that were present with him, about 100, 600 men. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, the people that were present with them, a bold and given of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped in Michmash. So we are still in the same battle that has picked up in verse 5. That was verse 5 earlier? I don't know. And he's got 600 men. 600 men. They've got at least 6,000 horsemen. And 30,000 chariots. Yeah, and at the beginning he had 2,000 with him and 1,000 with John. Yeah. So but the present. So he should have 3,000. Yeah, but there were present with him right now are 600. That's a, and Saul and Jonathan, his son, and the people that were present there with him abode in Gibna of Benjamin. That's his hometown. But the Philistines encamped in Michmen. And the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. These are the ones that are going to go grab all the war goodies. Take the rings off the dead fingers, open up the wallets, take the sacks, take the, you know, everything they could get. Happens in every war. One company turned onto the way that leaded through Ophrah and to the land of Shul. Another company turned by the way of Beth Huron, or Horon, and another company turned to the way of the border that looketh through the valley of Zebum, Zebaim, Toward the wilderness. That's, that's a weird entry. The battle hasn't even happened yet. The spoilers are come out. Now, here we go. There was no smith. First time that word shows up. There'll be a lot of first times. That's a blacksmith. That's any smith of the trades of metal, wood, uh, leather, anything. There was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Least the Hebrews make them swords. That's the first time swords, plural, shows up. We don't want our enemy to have the weapons. Or spears. That's the first time spears, plural, shows up. So there's no weapons. That's what Americans are afraid of. The Philistines are going to come and take all our weapons. What? You're with, you're like Saul in the, in the nation of Israel? You're out of the will of God? I'm in the will of God. God take care of me. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines, so they had to go into the enemy to sharpen. That's the first time that showed up. Every man his share... First time and last time. These are farm tools. And his coulter, first and last time. And his axe. And his mattock, first time. Yet they had a file, first and last time. 
So in order to have their farm equipment fixed, they had to take it down to the shop at the Philistine. They had to file for the Maddox. That's the first time that shows up. That's plural. Maddox and Maddox. And for the Coulters, first and last time that shows up. And for the Forks, first time and last time that shows up, that would be like your pitchfork. And for the axes, and to sharpen, first time that shows up. And that axis is the first time that shows up. This that one. And golds, first time that shows up. So Israel has a file. They are able to sharpen their tools. But they can't fix them or buy them unless they go down to the Philistine land. So it came to pass in the day of battle, here we come, that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul or Jonathan. They don't have no weapons. The Philistines had weapons. But with Saul and Jonathan, his son was there found. Jonathan, saw, and, Jonathan and Saul have swords or spears. We know Saul has a spear because he uses it wrongly. Yeah, javelin. And the garrison, the military group of the Philistines, went out to the passage of Micmac. And we're going to continue the battle in the next chapter. So the, the realm of the elements of chapter 13, is it we go back? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it's just weird. <laughs> All these farm instruments. 